Yes, hello, welcome to a new update for an Unbound Clockwork, finally. Um, sorry for being absent for uh, the last month. Uh, it was just, uh, there were some delays and I was waiting for things and there was not too much things to show. So, um, yeah, this video is now the um, conclusion for the last two months, basically. And one of the main things we were waiting for was the human boss character, Puppet, of course, um, because he was still missing his clothes and some details. And so, yeah, I think the most important thing which got finished is his costume. And yeah, Liane, our costume tailor, managed to sew some tiny little shirt and a vest and of course his jacket. And yeah, I can only imagine how difficult it must be to, um, yeah, first of all, lay out the shapes of cloth you're going to need to assemble this and then sew everything because, of course, in that scale you usually can't uh, just use a sewing machine, it's just, um, yeah. It, it must be difficult, I can imagine. It's it's nothing I, I'm, I'm capable to do on my own, so I'm very glad uh, she was here to help. And another complication on those uh, puppet clothes is um, that many regions need to be um, stiffened with a bit of uh, black wrap aluminum foil or wires, so it doesn't uh, jiggle too much in the animation. And so uh, mostly the jacket here, like the, the front sections and the arms are stiffened with black wrap, which is glued onto the inside of those uh, yeah, cloth regions. Um, yeah, it, it seems to work fine, but the arms turned out a bit stiffer than I hoped for, so maybe doing it with black wrap isn't the best option here. Uh, we, will, we will have to see in the animation, but yeah, it's, it's learning by doing. Um, I'm, I'm confident it will work somehow. Um, and of course it, it looks really neat, especially with this uh, tiny little um, handkerchief in his pocket and things. Yeah, I, I love the final look of him. In the meantime, Ulrich was also busy finishing the mustaches and eyebrows of the character. And those are sculpted from kneading silicone, which is a sculpting material which is intended to stay flexible after curing. But um, it seems the flexibility is not too great after curing, so anyways we ended up sculpting different uh, mustaches in different uh, stages of bending, so those can be replaced as well as needed. And uh, now we have a range of mustaches and also two sets of eyebrows to work with. So yeah, I hope we will be able to achieve all the different expressions uh, he's going to need. Also, the final pair of silicone hands got molded for this character. Um, they really look great, but I had to cut off a bit of the arm section to make them fully fit inside the sleeve. But I guess that's okay, because it will never be visible. Also, I manufactured one last prop, which I nearly forgot about, and that was the plate of the boss. Um, it's sitting right in front of him and he's eating from it, of course. And uh, yeah, I hammered it from a piece of uh, copper sheet metal, which is a quite nice soft metal for hammering. Um, but I wanted to look really nice and shiny, and so I gold plated it in my galvanic gold bath. And so it's now covered in a very thin layer of actual gold and yeah, it looks, it looks really expensive and luxurious. So I think that's a proper plate now. And then I added some tiny breadcrumbs to it so it's not completely clean. So that was the main uh, physical work which was needed to finish the set finally with the puppet and everything. And then we were finally ready to start shooting. In preparation for that, Maurice and I uh, spent a lot more time planning out all the details. So for one, that's uh, a storyboard, which not just shows 
drawings of the scenes, but actual photographs of the set with the characters. So the framing and the perspective of the camera is now fixed and the animator has a clear um, understanding of how the framing is for each individual shot. And also annotate each shot, like uh, when is the character eating which piece of food and yeah, all those little details. So there's a clear instruction guide for each shot now, in addition to the reference acting we did the month before. Um, and also it was very important to test the lighting in this set because as with all fully enclosed um, inside room sets, it can be quite challenging to light because uh, yeah, the light has to come from somewhere. So you have to remove some of the walls, which again, distorts the lighting inside and also the animator has to reach in. So uh, at least for the, um, for the wide angle shots, we have to piece it together from different exposures, like one exposure for the left side wall, one for the center section, one for the right side wall. And when doing something like this, all sorts of problems can arise because of course each section of the set is lit from a different direction and it's important that this doesn't look too strange in the end result. So we tested it and I was quite glad to discover that everything worked quite well out of the box. So now we have this one image which kind of defines the final look of all the scenes and I'm quite happy with it, I think. And also we wrote this uh, quite extensive um, instruction for all the different exposures which each shot is going to need, like um, yeah, one pass for each side of the set, but each side again with different uh, brightnesses of the chandeliers and the external lights and everything. So yeah, we can actually achieve a very um, even look throughout the entire set. Yeah, maybe I will go in a bit more detail in a future video when I'm making a dedicated video for the set and the character maybe, we will see. Also, while doing this test setup for the lights, we discovered that all the little light bulbs of the chandeliers all together use up way more power than we had imagined. So the chandeliers currently use like 50 watts of power in tiny light bulbs, which are not even at their full brightness. So I actually had to buy a new power supply, which is capable of providing five amps at low voltages. And I had to solder on thicker wires so uh, nothing will get warm. And um, yeah, it works now quite well, but uh, that was also something which definitely had to be done properly. After that, everything was ready to be moved to Mona studio, where it will be shot in the next two or three months. Um, Mona is the stop motion animator who is going to do the animation for the entire scene. And yeah, moving everything was quite an undertaking of its own because it was quite a lot of things. Uh, the set and all the wall pieces and props and characters which go with the set, but also the lighting equipment, the motion control, the camera equipment, all the power supplies. Yeah, it added up. It was quite a lot of things. And Mona studio is um, a surprisingly small cramped space. Um, so there's not very much room to move around the set. Um, I have worked in similar spaces in the past, so I know it will work, but it's definitely very cramped. So by now, uh, three shots are already animated and the fourth is currently being animated, I guess. And uh, we started with the shots of the main character entering the set. So actually there's no footage of the boss character himself yet but um, it made sense to start with the main human character um, for now. And uh, yeah, the shot who's getting animated right now is also a motion control shot with a vertical camera movement. And it also was quite difficult to set this up as with all camera movements basically. But um, yeah, I'm really glad we actually um, started shooting and new scenes are arriving every other day now. And so uh, I'm really looking forward to the next uh, two months uh, to finally see how the entire scene comes together after all this work. So yeah, that's about the news from an unwound clockwork. Um, but in the last two months, I also worked on some interesting commissions, which might be worth telling about if you're interested in general stop motion news. 
So for once, uh, the Danish stop motion studio Wiredfly is working on a stop motion computer game. It's called Vocabulantis. Um, maybe you heard of it. It was on Kickstarter about a year ago. And it seems like a lovely project. And uh, yeah, I was able to uh, contribute a couple of special armature parts for them. So um, yeah, I made uh, some braid armatures, basically for a hair braid, <laughs> a string of tiny joints in one row, um, and a stretch and squash mechanism, which is going to uh, be part of a backpack, which is going to wiggle up and down, I guess. Um, so those is just um, two pieces of aluminum to save weight with some brass inserts for the actual screw and it can be um, stretched and squashed, basically. Yeah, that's the idea. Um, and of course, I also supplied some of my uh, fully articulated hand armatures um, together with some arms. Um, on this occasion, I also um, made a new batch of hand armatures in the medium size. So if you're interested in getting one, um, there are some couple of improvements over the last version and yeah, they are back in stock mainly. Um, then there's a little uh, stop motion short film production in my hometown of Leipzig, where I'm also involved in making some of the armatures. So uh, this is the first armature I finished for them and there will be uh, three more to be made in the next month probably. And um, at last, um, Ulrich and I took the opportunity to further develop those 3D printed hand molds. There was one customer who wanted to get some pre-molded custom hands we made for him. And on this occasion, we really figured out how we can yeah, efficiently turn 3D models into proper molds. We can also sell and make custom shaped fingers for each customer basically and yeah so this also worked uh, like a charm we figured out all the details now and so if anyone is interested in a bunch of very custom high quality hand molds or molded hands with armatures or anything uh, that's something we can supply now with confidence as well so that's really great maybe we will add it to my shop as well at some point but uh, for now this is just an exclusive thing for customers who want something custom made because as of now it's a bit expensive you can imagine and we're trying to lower with the costs and everything but um, yeah technically it works very well and uh, yeah let us know if you're interested and at last I was able to spend finally a bit more time tinkering on my thread cutting machine. So at least one of the side pieces is now finished which houses the power supply and a very nice and shiny um, emergency stop button. Which is kind of the most satisfying thing to press on that machine I guess. Um, yeah, still not finished. Uh, I just don't find the time to properly work on it but um, yeah I'll keep you updated on this as well. So um, yeah I think that's about all I can tell for now. Um, hopefully we will have a lot of new animations to look at in the next month and uh, yeah thank you so much for watching till the end. See you next month again. Bye bye!